At the time of their extinction, the thylacine was the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. Thousands of years ago, they did live across mainland Australia as well as Tasmania. But by the time Europeans colonised Australia, they were only found in Tasmania. They were seen as a fearsome beast. By the late 1800s, the government of Tasmania introduced a statewide bounty, which really was the thing that pushed the thylacine really to the edge. The museum has roughly 30 thylacine individuals in our collection. They are prepared in all different ways. So the taxidermy mounts have a long history at the museum and they're really valuable for the public to get up close to a thylacine and to imagine what it would be like to have these animals here. Because they look so lifelike, they've been used in all sorts of exhibitions over the years. Then we also have skins and we also can collect the skeleton of a specimen and we can also prepare it as an ethanol preserved specimen like this one. In some ways we're lucky that we have such a variety of specimens. Even from the late 1800s, from the 1870 onwards, it was known that they were disappearing. They were becoming harder to find. It was almost like there was a call from the scientific community to Basically, get your specimens now before it's gone, which is pretty devastating. So I think there is an understanding that they were preserving them for posterity, but I don't think at the time there was any concept of how we'd be using them today. We have the mother, and then there were four pouch young that were found, and they were preserved in ethanol. So you can see there's actually the whole animal there. You can see even their facial features, their feet, the hands. We're just lucky by chance that the pouch young were placed in ethanol. That is able to preserve DNA and that has been the key to being able to extract the genome, being able to understand the biology of the thylacine in a way that we never did when it was alive. One of the pouch young has then been prepared as slides. So a researcher requested to section that, make slices through the whole animal. These days, you could actually get lots of those things from CT scanning. It's still valuable, but we often now CT scan animals to look at all the different structures within the body. Weighing up how we use them, how we treat them now, versus how someone might be able to study them in future is always a bit tricky, but that's the whole point of the collection here is that we are trying to look after it so that it will be here in 100 years, 150 years or further. I feel a responsibility to make sure that they do continue because in some ways they survive. They survive here at the museum. It's not the same as being alive, but we have evidence that they existed and we can remember them. And that's such a powerful tool for how we look after the animals around us and how we think about the kind of world that we want to have in future.